What's cracking? You are now listening to Behind the Baller Podcast with me, Ben Baller, not Ben Humble. Yes, they call me the Korean John Cusack, but I call me the Korean Liam Neeson. Yo, man, we're live from New York City. What's shaking East Coast? Uh, I got my dog, Jimmy Boy, coming up here soon. So that means I got to hide all the candy and food and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because that motherfucker loves to eat. And I can't have him eating all my snacks, bro. So, man, the weekend wrap-up is all over the place. You already know. And today we're going to get into that Wilder versus Fury, part two, uh, a coronavirus scare, potential scare on my flight here. Uh, more on coronavirus, of course, and lies from the CDC. The Lakers are playing a little bit, you know what I'm saying? They're getting their work in. Um, this little Adidas thing that I worked on, in- including Asians doing big things, and how I love to support my Asian people. Uh, oh yeah, my guy Tack Stone called in to bless us with some more of that real New York talk. Yes, he's still in prison. Um, Miles, Mr. Jordan Winter, AKA the Dust Brothers, Lakey Lake, let's go. So um, there's a lot to talk about and discuss on this episode. Uh, let me start off by my entire family is supposed to be here right now with me. It is uh, my eight-year wedding anniversary tomorrow, February 25th. Eight years married. We've been together for over 10 years. And, uh, you know, I just want to say that I'm very lucky to be married to such a wonderful woman. Um, Nicolette is uh, a very understanding wife and uh but she still lets me know when i've crossed the line and she lets me know how to stay in bounds because you know i will motherfucking go out of bounds a lot my wife she holds down the household that's a fact shot to my mother-in-law as well and uh my, my wife is the, the greatest mom she really is she's really incredible she's helped me be a better dad and i feel bad because you know my kids aren't the easiest to deal with and i'm not talking about the health issues i'm talking about just them being little rascals you know they're fucking crazy um, just a few days ago, Ryder got really sick from the dosing that we're doing with the peanut allergy treatment. And, um, he was blowing chunks all over the place and it was just all fucked up. We had to clean up the throat, just the smell of throat. It was just fuck, you know, and just dealing with them. It's just, it's a special thing. And, um, he had like a stomach virus on top of that. I don't know what was going on, but it was, it was definitely, you know, stem from, uh, the peanut allergy dosing. So I had to quarantine Ryder on some fucking coronavirus type shit and we quarantine into the guest house area and uh the guest room there looks like a hotel room so you know we had to chill out a little bit but uh, you know we we uh, i didn't do any work um i had finished the kobe piece pretty much all the way in and the last final pieces i had uh had my team finish up and uh shout out to joe and jimmy but i was praying to god that i wasn't going to get sick on the way here because uh Ryder had a little bit of a fever and he was sleeping right next to me, you know, and he's just not feeling good. I just hate seeing him just feeling like shit. But anyways, um, with all the information being put out there and how strong this coronavirus is coming into the U.S. and everywhere in the world, you know, um, my wife made the final decision not to come. Not, you know, we're going to celebrate our anniversary when I get back and uh, obviously not to let our kids come here. So it was a solo mission to the Rotten Apple. So let's begin with uh, talking about my flight. Um, so I get on my JetBlue Mint flight. All right. By the way, Mint is the shit. It could be probably the best first class domestic wise. In, U- in the United States of America, I think it's definitely probably the best. Next to uh, United has a pretty good with the Polaris. Um, Delta has some lay down beds that are pretty good. The, the Mint, just the food, the whole experience of JetBlue Mint is really good. But, uh, you know, when you get the single pod too, you get this little single room, you get to close the door, you have your own little fucking suite. It's fucking awesome. And so uh, Saturday night, I catch the red eye. And uh, thank God for Dazen, or is it Dazen? I don't know what it is. D-A-Z-N app, by the way, which let me watch the Fury Wilder fight because I was at the airport watching the fight and shit, you know what I'm saying, on my phone um, right before I got on the flight, everything finished. Anyways, more about that later. 
Uh, I get on my flight and I immediately sanitize and disinfect the whole suite, the whole little booth area where I'm sitting in. It's like a little private booth, um, first class suite and everything, right? With my Clorox wipes, I clean the armrest. I clean the headrest. I clean the tray table, the seat. And I even fucking clean the little television area and the borders and the fucking, even like the window area. Anything I could touch got cleaned. All right, I get all my shit ready. I lay down my snacks. I get my headphones. I get my little charger and all that shit. I get my fucking little iPad out and everything. And I begin to watch this new show on Amazon Prime called Hunters. Uh, I can't speak too much about it on the show yet. You know what I mean? I mean, it's barely just got into it. And anyway, so uh, I'm watching maybe 20, 30 minutes and I pass out. All right. So I sleep for about an hour and a half. No, about an hour and 45 minutes, okay? And when I wake up, all the lights are on. Which is fucking weird because, you know, this is a red-eye flight and all the lights are usually off, right? All the fucking lights are on the plane. And I'm wearing one of those little fucking silly masks, the little eye mask. You don't know, cover your eyes. I never wear that shit. I have no idea why. I was just like, you know what? Maybe this might help. I don't know. I put the fucking mask on. I wake up, move the mask, and I see all this commotion. I see a lot of people moving around. I see a lot of fucking whispering and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? So I kind of get up. I put the bed up to a regular seat, kind of like a reclining seat. And I look out the window. And sure enough, we're airborne. We're rolling. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't look like we're on our descent or nothing. So I look at the watch. And I'm like, all right, now they fucking trip it. So I go back to sleep for like another 35, 45 minutes until I hear like some commotion again going on behind me, like four rows behind me. Okay. So I look out. And um, I noticed that this Jewish guy that's sitting across from me, reason why I know is because when we got on the plane, uh, we were kind of like arguing, not arguing, but we were like, okay, who's going to get, you know, the overhead bin storage here and here? And I ran out on my side, so I kind of used his side. And I noticed this Jewish dude with a, a yarmulke, and um, he's like, through his backpack. He didn't give a fuck about, I don't know, nothing. He just, some of these people aren't really taking the, the coronavirus serious. And whatever, this ain't about that, but it could be. I look across, and he has a solo pod too, and he's not in his pod. So I'm like, okay, so I keep looking and I look to the like emergency exit area and he's talking to the, the flight attendant and the staff and stuff. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? So I turn around immediately to the seat behind me. There's a couple and one's awake and one's sleeping. And I'm like, hey, bro, I'm, I'm so sorry, man, to bother you, but what's going on? Do you, do you know? And they said, oh, man, you know, you were asleep, I guess, right? And I was like, yeah, I was asleep. He says, well, thank God you slept through this. And I was like, well, I slept through what? Um, and the dude was like, man, the entire plane is like kind of frantic. You know, they're little, some of these people are hysterical. So uh, some guy apparently in row nine went crazy. Um, he just started acting like he started jittering and, and started speaking gibberish and shit. And uh, I guess he pissed himself and, and possibly shit. With a, let's say he sharded on himself or pissed or some, some shit. And I was like, what the, what? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And they said, yeah, man, you know, um, the guy across from you, he's a doctor. And I was like, the guy with the yarmulke? And he goes, yeah, he's a doctor. And he's hell, he went over there to help him out. So they gave him some gloves. And I was like, listen, what the fuck? So I'm like, hold on one second, man. I had to get up. I put my N95 mask back on because I heard it's actually bad to sleep with it on, even though I would love to, right? I have two different versions of it. But they're saying that you, with the way the mask is, when it's, especially when it's fit tight, you can get a lack of CO2. And you might fall asleep and they'll wake up from that motherfucker. So I got worried. I'm like, fuck this shit. Like, you know, let me put this mask on. I put the mask on and I start fucking trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And I get up now and I get out of the motherfucking area. And I'm standing up, worried and nervous. And I look over and I see the flight attendants are spraying from the emergency exit down to my section. They're just like spraying like disinfectant or some shit. I don't know, some kind of fucking spray, right? And they're also wiping shit down, right? In that beginning of that, 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 like row nine, row 10, which is emergency exit 10, I think. And, and I see people standing all the way in the back of the plane and they're scared. I'm like, where the fuck are these people? Like, should they be sitting down? And then the flight attendant comes up to my row and sprays the Jewish doctor's area, like his little thing area. And the doctor's following right behind him and he's got bare feet. And I'm like, what the, bro, where's your motherfucking socks at? First of all, Okay, you ain't got no shoes on. What, what, I know you had some socks because I, I saw you take your shoes off rocking socks, you nasty motherfucker. And I'm just thinking to myself, this is fucking gross, you know? So I asked the doctor, dude, I'm like, yo, bro, is everything okay? And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, um, I guess we'll know in two days. And I was like, two, I said, two days? What, what the fuck are you talking about? Two, what do you mean two days? Um, I, I said, hey, man, does the guy have the flu? 
And he said, oh, I don't know if he has the flu. I don't have a flu test here. And I said, does he even have a fever? Does, you know, um, is it, you know, anything? And the guy goes, you know, yeah, he feels a little warm, you know. Um, he had like a slight one, I guess. And I'm like, either he does or he doesn't. You motherfuckers got a thermometer in this bitch or something? He's like, yeah, okay, you know, uh, he, he, had, he had a slight fever, you know, 99 point something. And I'm like, okay, y'all fucking tripping right now. Listen, man, I'm talking to the flight attendant. I'm like, listen, you guys got to land this plane in Chicago and you got to let me the fuck off. Okay, and and I'm not I'm not playing. And he and the flight attendant was like, "Listen, it's not anything deeper than what it is. The guy had an anxiety attack. He had a little bit of issue. Don't worry about it. It's not coronavirus. I know you were worried about that before because I saw you talking to other people. And I look back to that row ten. I guess the emergency exit row. I guess they switch seats around because he shit on. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I look back and the dude is passed out with an oxygen mask to his face." And um, they told me he was talking loud, talking fast, going crazy. All of a sudden, he just passed out. He wasn't sleeping. He just passed the fuck out. And I'm just like really bothered and scared, trying to fucking figure this shit out. I have a little fucking emergency quarter bar of Xanax in my pocket. You know what? This is when medicine works. I took that shit and fell asleep. And I woke up in motherfucking New York City. We landed safely at JFK. And, uh, you know, thank fucking God. Got into my Uber and um, got into my hotel and checked into my hotel. I uh, got a shout out. Molly won't tell you the hotel because uh, that obviously um, compromised my safety and my privacy. And uh, you already know how that shit goes. But yeah, Molly, thank you so much. Um, the coronavirus situation isn't getting any better. No matter what the bullshit reports are saying in China, like saying, oh, less new cases in China, uh, you know, less death. Man, shut the fuck up. Okay. China is not releasing any new actual real info. That's all, period. All right? But now you see that there's way more, like, infections. There's more deaths. In Iran, there's deaths. There's a fucking outbreak in Italy. Korea had a crazy outbreak. That shit has gone all the way fucking to... Korea is now the highest... Well, they have the most level of infections outside of China. All right? Shit's getting real bad all over. It's catching up. Motherfuckers ain't playing around, all right? Korea and Italy have issued travel bans into their countries. Actually, the, the, the countries that border, I guess, Iran and Iraq, they put travel bans to that border right there because they don't want motherfuckers getting, you know, getting out because people in Iran are dying. Um, it's getting to scary hours, okay? As I said before, I know there are way worse cases in the USA than some of you fools out there think there are. Okay, some of you guys are like, nah, man, Ben, you bugging dog, relax. No, you need to shut the fuck up and be prepared for this shit. Okay, or let me just give you a couple facts. All right, okay, and this is all the shit that's hit major news. Okay, one, this dumbass bitch who flew into USA from Japan, she lied on national television about having the coronavirus. Okay, she said to a customs agent or whoever, whatever authority figure that there was. She said that she wasn't infected and never was, and she said she lied so that she could get on the flight back home to the United States of America. But in fact, later she admitted that she wasn't showing any symptoms, so she didn't think it was a problem, but she was in fact infected, okay? So let me tell you something real quick. This bitch needs to get arrested for lying and endangering lives. This bitch possibly infected, you know, 100 people. Who fucking knows? Bitch got on a plane, you know, she has a coronavirus. She fucking knew she did. And, you know, she didn't give a fuck. She lied and got on a fucking plane. They didn't, they should have fucking checked. Regard I mean, this is just crazy. This is just the way that this is being conducted. Like, they're not fucking doing enough. Where the fuck is our defense, man? What the fuck? You know, that, that lady in Korea, Jesus Christ, she went to a church, um, a church in Daegu. You know, South Korea, she went to church and she infected like over a hundred people. And like, th this shit is crazy, you know? Anyways, here's another fact, okay? And you can Google, these, these are facts, like major news, okay? The city of Costa Mesa, shout out to VVS Pans, just so you know, that's, that's where our offices are. Um, the city of Costa Mesa placed a restraining order against the state of California because they tried to fly in 70 infected coronavirus victims. Did you hear? They tried to fly it. They're looking for a place to quarantine 70 infected coronavirus victims. 
They want to fly him into fucking Costa Mesa. Okay, hold the fuck on, all right? Wait, just wait a minute. Huh? But wait a second. The CDC, right, who's supposed to be, you know, looking out for us, right? They said that currently there's only 33 cases of infected people with the coronavirus in the USA. How could there be 70 people, infected people, wanting to fly into Costa Mesa? Exactly. Everyone's full of shit. All right, it's getting fucking scary right now. You know, there's fucking rioting in fucking the Ukraine because people are worried about a fucking, you know, this pandemic. It already is a pandemic, okay? But look it, you guys are worried about there being riots and fucking, you know, people just out of order and all kinds of shit. Hey, man, listen, you got to let people motherfucking know the truth, okay? And I, again, again, I can't stress this enough. I'm not trying to scare you guys. I just want all you to all stay informed, okay? Please wash your hands. Wash them often. You touch your face, wash your hands. Shake someone's hand, wash your hands. You touch an elevator or railing or something, wash your hands. Wash them good with soap and water. Uh, you sanitize if not. Just be aware of all your surroundings, what's going on. This is going to get really ugly in a very short while. All right? Damn, man. I'm, so, I'm sorry for that, guys. I know it's that's the third episode now I've talked about it, but... Let's lighten it up and talk about sports real quick. Um, do some of you guys remember how much of a fan I was? Well, I mean, I, I am of Tyson Fury. Um, if you follow me on Twitter and you remember the boxing commentary I gave on Tyson Fury 1. I mean, Fury Wilder 1. Sorry. The commentary I gave on that fight, that shit had the internet crazy. Okay. People, I told you, they love my boxing commentary and they go fucking nuts when I talk about uh, the police chases, right? Um, after that fight, after Fury Wilder won, I became a super fan stan overnight of Tyson Fury, okay? But as I seen him act out in the last year, heard, heard him his, his pod, when he uh, was a guest podcast on, a, on Mike Tyson's show and uh, he's just doing silly, ridiculous shit on the WWF shit and... Just like, just, just tri you know, he's just tripping, you know, it's obviously not, you know, not everything's there, but, but he's fucking insane boxer. He's like on some snatch shit, you know what I mean? He's just, do you like dags? He's really on some snatch shit, okay? But even hours before the fight, you know, just a few hours before the fight, while Deontay Wilder is stretching, getting it, you know, getting his break and his sweat and everything, you got Tyson Fury still wearing his street clothes, like acting crazy dancing around, trying on crowns and shit. He's like trying on crowns and dancing and singing and acting crazy while Deontay is taking this shit real serious, okay? So I'm like, okay, you know, Tyson Fury thinks this shit's a joke and, you know, interviews this week, he's like, yo, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna fight him. I'm gonna fight uh, Deontay. You know, we're gonna get right in his face. We're gonna mix it up. You know, we're gonna do the dance and I'm like, hold on, bro. That's why I was like, wait a second, you gonna box with Deontay? I was like, hold on, man. Wilder got a mean right hook Strong as fuck, got a mean right hand, period. Don't play that mix it up shit with him, man. You know what I'm saying? Like stick and move. I don't know, you know? But you have to understand the way I've talked about Tyson Fury in the last year. So I've always liked Tyson Fury, okay? But the safe bet seemed to bet on Wilder. You know, this time it's like, all right, you know, the last time it was a draw, whatever. I think Wilder lost that fight. Um, and this time, I think almost actually... Oh. You know, everyone almost bet on, I mean, I think everyone had Wilder winning the fight, okay? So the odds, you know, everyone's betting on, on Deontay. Well, that fight started, okay? Fury Wilder part two started, and that shit was ended real fast, okay? That motherfucker Tyson Fury not only knocked Wilder the fuck out, but he knocked him out two motherfucking times in the first few rounds. He cold laid this motherfucker. I hit the motherfucker with a body shot. He knocked that fool down. Do you know how strong Deontay Wilder is, bro? Okay. He knocked that. He broke that motherfucker's eardrum open. He fucked this dude up. This shit was uh, looked like that fucking episode of Martin when Martin was fighting fucking uh, Tommy Hearns. This shit was crazy. Okay. And to make things even fucking crazier, Tyson Fury licked the blood off of Deontay Wilder's shoulder to show you how much of an absolute savage this motherfucking British motherfucker is, okay? This guy, Tyson Fury, would eat his mom out. 
he would maybe fuck his sister. He's crazy as fuck. He don't even give one eighth of a fuck. Okay? My Lord. I mean, it looked like Wilder's eardrum was was ruptured. He couldn't even fucking hear after the fight, okay? Um, Tyson Fury is a true freak of nature. He is a fucking a boxing wonder. Uh, the next question is, okay, does he fight Anthony Joshua next? Or do we see a um, Fury Wilder part three? I, I don't know. B but I do know this. Wilder needed an entire new camp like a couple fights ago, okay? He's strong, and, and he's knocked some motherfuckers out, right? No disrespect, but his leg work, a little weak. Um, his legs look weak, period, and he just look off. Something ain't right. No, thank God they stopped that motherfucking fight because he he's, was in trouble, all right? With that said, he got to come with a new coach, manager, and trainer, all right? For real. He could have got motherfucking killed in there. Um, on some basketball in my Lake show in Laker news. We're on a little win streak. Okay, we got five games. And uh, we're still number one in the Western Conference. But I was watching the Celtics-Laker game. You know what I'm saying? That's our, it's a classic rivalry. I grew up loving this rivalry. Magic Bird. This is some, some next level shit, right? And um, I'm watching the Celtics game and Jason Tatum is just tearing us apart. He's just too much for us. Um, he was busting asses uh, I was low key worried, and against most of the big good teams, we just we we get close and then we crumble, or you know we we barely fall short. But it's like we never had a chance. You know what I'm saying? But this time, you know, shit was different. You know, when it came to the difference, LeBron came in, he put the nail in the coffin. Um, it's weird to see him make a game winner. You know, the game winning shot. And what's even weirder is it put a big smile on my face. Okay. I don't know how to feel about that yet. All right? I don't know, man. You know, we, we beat Boston, a legit team, but uh, I'm figuring it out. So LeBron situation, I mean, I'm, I'm a Laker fan. You know, it's all good. And, um, oh, yeah, we signed uh, Markeith Morris. You know, I'll talk about that another time. I don't really know a whole lot about dude, and uh, I don't know how I really feel about the whole um, signing anyway. But anyways, um, after uh, I landed in New York City, I hit Dame Busters, of course, and that's where I watched the Laker game. Uh, shout out to my guy Popeye Shout out to Dave Busters You know what I'm saying And goddamn, It gets crazy as fuck At the Times Square location You know And then I uh, found out That they're the number one To number three At any given time They're the number one Two or three Location In the country Period right Or I don't know if the world But I think they're only in USA And uh, it's like a tiny Little Dave and Busters It's not that big right But you know Went in there Hit the Star Trek machine. There's this new game. I ain't going to tell you what it is, but I heard that's where you get the real points, right? Because I got a couple hundred thousand tickets on my um, on my Dan Buster's card. But I had to get my skills up, you know, on the speed of light. Of course, uh, it was amateur hour up there. A lot of tourists and shit. No one could fucking see me on that game. And uh, by the way, I, I think I talked about it. I saw Bieber and I was like, man, he don't want this smoke. But yeah, you know, I hit Dan Buster's and uh, caught up with my guy Char, um, Char actually. Got some coffee and uh, and um, yo, you know what? Let's take a break real quick, and let's see what my dog Tack Stone has to talk about. Um, Lakey, can you hit me one time? is a free call from Tax Stone, an inmate at New York City Department of Correction. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. Tax Stone, what's the science, baby? What's well, shaking, my nigga? Y'all heard you out here in New York, man. I hope you didn't bring that coronavirus with you, nigga. <laughs> oh, yo, that's, I swear to God. I was just about to ask I, I you. I got family out here, my nigga. I was just about to ask you, bro. Like, what the fuck, yo? That shit is everywhere, and check it out, bro. I've been talking about it heavy because I got mad insight on it. What if that shit hit the yeah. pen, bro? What if that shit hit the feds? Oh, it's over for niggas. Yeah, you guys are I dead. told the COs already. I said, all one of y'all got to do is catch something, and it's over for us in here. But I don't know. The blast y'all don't gave us some good health coverage. We might be all right in here. Yo, so what's good, my bro? Like, um, 
I heard you got, you know, you, you didn't get to speak enough on the last podcast, man. You got you got something on your mind? What's shaking, bro? Come on, man. I told you we could have went three hours, Ben Boy. You know I like talking. I'm a podcaster, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wanted to say something because it was a uh, CO came up to me earlier. He was saying something. It said something on World Star about me calling Fifty Cent a snitch, and I was like, I never called him a snitch. You know what I mean? Everybody I called a snitch, I called him a snitch. You know what I mean? And um, I just wanted to make sure that people understood what it was. You know what I mean? First of all, I'm I'm in jail, and here you can find out who's telling easily. You understand? All it is is called the Freedom of Information Law. And you put in a Freedom of Information request and you could get everything that a person ever did in the legal system so you would know if they cooperated or not. You know, it's specific people. Like, it's people out there that really cooperated. That's why I've never bought 50 Cent name up because people always said it, but ain't nobody never produced nothing on black and white. And see, black and white is not hard to get. You know what I mean? It's like, for instance, like, the dude that I'm going through the case with right now, he put up a letter from my lawyer that wrote the for a bail letter, basically saying, why is my client being held with no bail? Because he didn't get caught on camera shooting, and he doesn't, he didn't get caught with a murder weapon and whatever else might be, but this person is on camera shooting and gets caught with a murder weapon but gets bail. And this dude puts it up and says he has paperwork on me. A letter that's clearly not from me, it's from my attorney, but even if it was from me, it wouldn't be telling because telling is offering information, and it was no information offered, you understand? So, like, for instance, I heard something about WAC 100 called T.I. snitch recently. Listen, I'm in the federal system. T.I. did not tell. He didn't snitch. And if WAC 100 was a real street dude, he would know that because he would have did his due diligence and looked at it. Even in the case where T.I. testified on the stand, if you listen to the testimony, T.I. did not tell. He didn't identify anyone. You understand? Right. So yeah. he didn't offer information. And that's what I, I explained to people before when I first said the things that I said about Tupac, when I first said the things I said about Cameron, I said they offered information in a criminal investigation that was unknown. You understand? So if you, you bring something unknown, it's like first 48 when you see the room. See, the thing is with snitching, right? Snitching is some crazy shit because a lot of the times these dudes not even snitching. They're just lying to get out of jail and it's allowed. If you look at Sammy the Bull, for instance, right? Sammy the Bull got, I think, arrested for 13 murders. And when you look at the system, they always say, yo, you know, this the families went through this and went through that. But they say he killed 13 people, but they gave him six years just because he gave them some information on Gotti. And he probably lied on Gotti about a lot of the shit. But whatever the government wants to lie to be, they're cool with that. That's how people become reliable witnesses because they're never reliable until they say they want to tell to get time off, and then they become yeah. a reliable witness after. It's like Takashi 6 9 for instance, you know what I mean? He was out here ordering hits on tape, throwing up gang shit, and then gets on the stand and says he was not in the gang. And he had nothing to do with that, and that wasn't his lifestyle, and he was faking. I don't think you put hits on people by mistake. I don't think you antagonize people and tell them to come out with the guns. I don't think you shoot shit up by mistake. You understand? It's yeah. just certain things, and the thing is, is that it's like as long as you tell the, the government's narrative, it's okay. So you can actually shoot five people, then go tell the government whatever story you want to tell them about somebody else. You'll get out of jail, and then you could go shoot five more people and do the same thing and keep getting out of jail. Because that's what happened on Sammy the Bull. And the thing is, that shit should be illegal. It should be illegal that someone could just create a lie to get out of prison because they don't want to serve time for the crimes that they committed. But check it out, like, on, on the Internet, we live in a day now where you don't even need evidence anymore. And a girl can just say fucking anything without any valid evidence, any kind of backup proof, and just be like, oh, this motherfucking tax, this dude Ben Baller raped me, he touched my ass, he tried to kiss me, and it's like, yo, we get, we go to jail, we get arrested immediately, ain't even no questions, no nothing. Now, oh no, it's true, and that's the problem with the whole culture is the accusations could get you ostracized out here. Like people will really castrate you out here for off accusation. Look at Oprah, Russell Simmons didn't get convicted of anything, but she started making a documentary on the dude. Even yeah. R. Kelly. R. Kelly didn't get convicted of anything either. Nobody should be judging anybody until a conviction comes. And even when the conviction comes, you have to question it sometimes. The thing is, is that people, we're in a cancel culture now where people just cancel people out so fast and they don't even do their investigation. Like Charlemagne always say, if the lie is more entertaining than truth, that's what people going to pump. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, look at Doc. Whack. Is a controversial dude. He's actually a friend of mine. I know Wack, right? I know Wack. Like we got a lot of, we have some mutual close family friends and everything. And 
he may say some things that are controversial here and there. I'm not necessarily like I don't necessarily agree with everything he say and whatever. But like I didn't even know a thing about the Ti thing. Like I didn't really pay attention to it, whatever. But I mean, you know, I, I heard about it recently because you know, like a lot of the CEOs, they know I'm in hip hop, so they come and tell me things like shit that was going on, and they was telling me he was arguing with Ti over the Nipsey thing when he said Nipsey wasn't a legend. And you know, just like I said, Wack 100, he's he's he could have his own opinion. I think that Wack 100 has the right to say that he thinks Nipsey not a legend. You know what I mean? Right. But I think. Even if Wack 100 died tomorrow, he would be a legend in his own right. I think he would be a legendary bozo. You know what I mean? A dude that didn't do nothing for his community. A dude that's out here 40-something years old asking people for fights every day on Instagram. You know what I mean? The thing is, is that these dudes pick and choose their battles wisely. See, I watch men. I watch the characteristics. I watched him on Breakfast Club say that the time that he bumped into 50 Cent and Monster, he knew that it could have got real and all of this because of Monster and the reputation he heard. And that's when I knew at that point that he wasn't gangster because gangsters don't care about another gangster's reputation. You have to renew your license every day in the street. It's like a real license and in, in for a car. Every right. couple years, you have to renew your license. So even if you was gangster last week, you have to be gangster today. So when he first said that, that's when I felt like, you know what, maybe this dude is just acting like he's tough for Instagram because when he was going at Stitches and those other dudes, it was like real crazy. But when he bumped into 50 Cent and Monster, it was like, oh, no, nah, because you know when you see me and Game see Monster. I was like, what the fuck? You don't even know that dude. How you how you was whispering his name and all that? Like, you, you nervous of him. But the thing is that he was nervous of his reputation, and that's what happens when you're not tough. You're nervous of reputation. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, bro, listen, man, I, I know dudes from... Um I don't want to get too political into the into the B's and C's, but like I know cats like I, I legitimately know people like some fam homies of mine who's from uh, that Piru set. You know what I'm saying? And they know like, you know, so I know whack really from the set and everything. Again, though, you know, you say like you got to renew your, your credibility every day, your street shit every day. I can't, you know, I mean, everyone has their opinion, but I mean, yeah, I guess that's, nah, that's cool. I understand that. But, what, but the thing is, is this right? This is what I tell people like, you know. A, a lion could kill a whole bunch of zebras, you know, a whole bunch of antelope, whatever. But, you know, if you get took down by a deer, or if you turn away next time you see a lion, then a person, you know, might not really believe that you're a lion. Because you acting like you're a lion until you see other lions. You understand what I'm saying? Like, when they see zebras and antelopes, it's on. So that's my thing with, with people like that. And, you know, I just feel like he said that about Nipsey just to say it. You know what I mean? Like, there was no reason for you to say that. Like, you, you just came out of nowhere. Nipsey Hussle's not a legend. Like, why, why is he not a legend? Like, he's a legend to a lot of people. He's definitely a legend to me, but that's his opinion. Yeah, no, that's his opinion. That, you know, Nip was my guy, so I'm not really... Listen, man, mm -hmm. we ain't got a lot of time yeah. here, bro. Listen, yo, New York lost a really important rapper. He was up and coming, and I feel like, yo, he had a, he was going, he had a lot of work to do. He was going to do some work. And I just feel like, fuck, man, my man, Stephen Victor, I feel so bad, man, and his family and everything and the whole world at this. Yo, man, what's your whole opinion about the whole Pop Smoke situation, man? Now, you know, it's sad. You know what I mean? It's always sad losing losing a soldier. You know what I mean? I got a lot of friends that, that work with Pop and that's real close with him, and I feel for them also. But, you know, in that, in that type of situation, like when cops go outside and they get shot or killed, we're not surprised. When gangsters go outside and they get shot and killed, they're not surprised. You know what I mean? The thing is, is that, you know, Pop Smoke was young, but Pop Smoke was selling debt in his records. And when you sell a whole bunch of debt, people tend to buy it sometimes. So when people say things like, oh, he was so young. Yeah, he was young. But if you outside, you're no longer young. When the day you jump off the porch and you decide to be in the street, no one cares what your age is. Damn, that's so real. And that's the thing about the, the hood and the community. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. sad that... He had to go out like that. I feel like that kid had some good music, and I feel like he had some. He could have did more. You know, what I mean, it's sad that it got cut short like that. But that goes for all of the young kids out there. And they go for the older dudes that's around them that's not telling them, like, yo, this shit is not about that. Let's get this money. Let's leave all of that shit alone. Like, you don't keep selling death all day when you live in a happy life. You know what I mean? You you chilling right now and your little you got your Airbnb in the Hollywood Hills, you getting your money. Like, fuck the beef, fuck the ops, you know what I mean? And I think people be focused too much on imaginary enemies and I think sometimes they make imaginary enemies real enemies. You know what I mean? But let me ask you a question. Like I mean I'm just wanting your personal opinion. I don't care about nobody else's. I'm asking you right straight up. You think it was gang related? You think like put it this way, you think he was killed on purpose or you think it happened to be it was a home invasion robbery? Like what you really think? Well, I really don't know. But the way I look at it, it just looks like it's a murder. 
You know what I mean? It looked like somebody just really wanted to take the kid off the earth. And was it a valid reason? Who knows? You know what I mean? I mean, and listen, sad, bro, Tex, you, know you got to understand. I'm tied to the streets with, like, you know, people rob motherfuckers try to come me back when I was, my store was in the hood. But, like, yo, I just got this dude. Boom. I never said anything to nobody, right? But what I'm saying is, like, you know, it's random motherfuckers that's in a bad mood. They hate life. They driving around in a car four deep. They ain't got no money. They see a motherfucker pull out a hundred bands on, you know, on Instagram. They're like, man, fuck this dude. Like, I'm saying, you think, would you put it past? You think it could, could have just been like, you know, it was just a lick? Or you think like, you know, that, you know, someone went out there to actually get him? Man, I think they want to kill that boy. I think they really went out there to kill him. Like, did they take anything? I, no, you know, tell you the truth. Like, yeah, you're right. I don't think they did. I don't know. I mean, I, not that I know of. Yeah, from like what I'm seeing on the news and the reports, it don't look like nobody really went there to take anything. So it's like, come on, like, it's sad, man. It, this shit is sad. But you know what I mean? It, it's like when I look at the Takashi situation where he was antagonizing rappers and stuff and like with Casanova and them. I used to be so sad, like, hearing rappers come after Casanova because I know Casanova really cracked their heads open. No, real and shit. And that nigga's really changing his life. Real he talk. don't want nothing to do with that shit. No, yeah. real shit. I can tell, like, I know, even with my cousin, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say my cousin's name. You know, my cousin was was locked up in the same spot, you know what I mean? When he was in there, he's saying, yo, Cass is really in there, and, and when he was in Rikers and shit. But going on, man, did you ever meet Pop Smoke before or no? No, no, I spoke to Pop Smoke. I spoke to him right before he got his deal through my son, Bid. I was on uh, my son, Bid's close friend, and I was just giving him, like, tips on the game. I was telling him certain people not to sign with certain, you know what I mean, people and shit like that or whatever. You know, I'm not, I, I, yeah, I really didn't even know what Pop Smoke looked like until a couple of weeks ago, tell you the truth. Same Damn. thing with the other kid from Brooklyn, Fabio Foreign. I spoke to him right before he signed this deal also, and I don't even know what he looks like. I'm just a supporter of the city. I'm a supporter of the culture. Oh, no doubt. I was really one of the first people really trying to put people on in New York City. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, you know, I met the dude. He's such a nice guy, man. Like, fuck. God damn, man. Yeah, it's just man. sad, man. He has some talent, man. I'm hearing all the music they've been playing, like the, the music that I didn't hear before, and I'm like, damn, this kid really has some talent. Like, he could have went far, and they just cut it short, man. Yeah, no, man, it's sad, man. I, I'm um. You have one minute left. Oh shit, we only got a minute left. I know you got some other shit that's on your on your mind, bro. What's popping, man? Before we get off. I don't even know. Oh yeah, I heard about I heard about Meek and um Meek bumping in and Nicki in the store. You know what I had to say about that? I said, listen, I heard a lot of Nicki Minaj raps about her vagina and the different flavors I think she her pussy might really be that good because how is she getting into it with a person that she broke up with three years ago she done started one of the biggest rap beefs in hip hop Nicki Minaj might really have a snack box my nigga <laughs> for real that's the only conclusion I could come to with that chick like oh my god bro you really <laughs> she about to start World War 3 outside <laughs> Oh, shit. That's crazy, bro. That's how we going to end this motherfucker. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Word up, man. Thank you for using Securus. Goodbye. See, so, yo, this is, a, this is a special weekend wrap-up. Uh, you just got blessed with 13 minutes of Tax Stone. And uh, it is a blessing, all right, for a, a legendary podcaster, one of the OGs, pioneers in this game, to be talking that shit on Behind the Baller on this podcast, okay? And, you know, I'm very, um, I'm impressed because every time I talk to Tax on the phone, I talk to my cousin, you know, their spirits seem to be real up, you know, and, and especially, you know, being locked up, being such a shitty place, you know, I, I, and, um, you know, he's he's uh, he's like, oh, shit, you in New York City, man, you know, you, I'm, you know, I got respect, man. You got to be headstrong for that shit, you know. And then, uh, again, shout out to Tax Stone for, for jumping on there and uh, jumping on this episode and, and, and talking that shit. So, like I said, this episode is real special because, um, you know, we get to do the weekend wrap up. We got a little special guest. And now we're going to get right into the fan questions. This is the part where I read your questions that you left in the review section of the Apple podcast. Uh, reviews and you leave a five star review and if you leave a question I answer it here on the show so let's get into some questions first question is from dnice110 have you ever considered having Scott Storch on your podcast um, yeah I have 
um, just right now. But uh, seriously, Scott is a long friend, longtime friend, um, worked the Aftermath days. Uh, he was a big part of not just the roots and the Philadelphia music scene, but like Miami, fucking Dr. Dre, Aftermath. This guy's produced so many fucking songs, R&B, just everything. And he's just stupid fucking talented. That's one thing. He's just, he's just really talented. And uh, I love Scott as a person. He's a great dude. He actually was looking for a diamond not that long ago, and I couldn't, well, it's not that I couldn't deliver for him. I just got real, I get real busy, you know, and I have a hard time doing uh, doing things. So, yeah, I definitely, you know, I'll reach out to Scott. It'd be good to hear some stories about, um, you know, the old school shit, what he's up to now. Uh, next question is, C Cree 8 writes, Hey, Ben, out of all the cars you currently have, what is your favorite car to drive on the weekends? It is 100% the Pista. Um, the 488 Pista is, is a beast. It's on rails, flat on the ground, looks good. Rides fucking amazingly great. Uh, fast as a motherfucking shit. It's got balls. And, uh, you know, I, I wish it wasn't a twin turbo, but yeah, no, the car's fucking uh, amazing. It's, it's, it's my favorite exotic car I've ever owned, period. Um, whoa, Jesus Christ, this guy. Chaos Orb writes... Ben, I consistently hear you talk about DJing and music. Now I'm currently 36, so we sort of grew up in the same music era. I know you were a DJ. Would you consider at some point making a Ben Baller mix for your podcast audience? Let me stop you because I know it's a long question. Number one, no, I got zero interest in doing that. Not not that I just, I just, I don't know, man. I mean, you know what? Let me take that back. Get on the turntables or getting in like, you know, on a Serato or something. Make us, I just don't have that kind of time. As far as making a playlist, you know, maybe. Um, you put... I feel a lot of listeners may not be familiar with the music of our era and real true rap, hip hop. I'd love to see a Ben Ball mixtape or playlist to give us an insight of the music you've been playing at clubs during your era. Oh, you know what? That's a good idea. On a second note, I was lucky enough to get one of your Ben Ball and money counters. I know the drop is coming for the vacuum sealer. Hope to get one as well. I think the next product should be a gold calculator. Uh, congratulations on the family and success of the fruits of your labor and continue to flourish. Mo. Thank you, Mo. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do a gold calculator. Uh, I got a couple ideas for different things. And uh, yeah, definitely work on that playlist for you. Uh, that'd be cool. So that'd be down for. Uh, CJ Beat in Beat and Go writes, Hey Ben, much love from Chicago. Listen to your podcast. Gives me inspiration to keep grinding with my side businesses and to stay focused. My question to you is, what are your favorite Filipino foods? Man, you know, pork adobos is one of them. Um, South Pacals. Well, I don't eat red meat anymore, but uh, um, pork adobo. Uh, I love pancit. I love lumpia. I love fucking Filipino fried chicken. It, it shit, dude. It's too much shit, man. I can't even. Filipino spaghetti done right. The way my mother in law does it is fucking amazing. Big Dick Mike. Yo, pause, fam. Fuck is wrong with you? Uh, writes. What up, BB? Weekly listener from El Paso, Texas. Want to hear thoughts on bitch ass Korea's response to Bellinger? It's funny you say that, man, because you're from El Paso. But yeah, Korea's a bitch. You know what's funny is, is I don't did I say this? I actually DM Korea. Cause he's fucking an idiot. If he doesn't think that these motherfuckers were involved, especially as Altuve wasn't involved. Are you fucking crazy? But I DM'd him. Uh I might screenshot the DM that I sent him. Cause I know the motherfucker saw it. Period. I know he saw it. Cause he follows people that fuck with me and I know a dude knows who I am. Um, but yeah, fuck Korea. And fuck the Houston Astros. Fuck them, period. Motherfucking cheaters, period. Uh, Chizzy Mode writes, What up, Ben? Listening from the IE and love the podcast. Will you ever consider taking fans to Dodger games like you did the Seahawks Packer game? You know what? I used to do it a lot. We used to sit in the bleacher seats, you know, the all you can eat bleacher seats. Um, might be a little tougher to do it now. I still, I think I, I might fucking do it. Fuck it. You know, I used to buy 40 tickets. We get the group rate, we get the name on the fucking on the screen. I think that I'm, I might fuck around and do it. I'm going to get with group sales. And uh, that's a good idea, man. Thank you very much, Chizzy. Appreciate it. Yeah, definitely something I want to do. That kid, Vic420, writes, I'm trying to start a new business, but not sure where to start. I know you the man for this question. Love the podcast. Been here since day one. How the fuck would I be the man? I mean, you're not sure where to start. I don't know what you like. I don't know anything about you. Do you know what I mean? I might tell you to fucking start a flower business because flowers are, are is a good business, but you not, not know shit about flowers. You don't like flowers. You wouldn't know where to begin to hire people. You know, you might like fucking hamburgers or love boba, you know, but it, it's, you gotta, I gotta know what you like first. I gotta know. And sometimes it's not about what you like. It's, it's you know, you studying, researching and figuring out what's a good business and how to adapt to that. 
Uh, Chris Double writes, big fan here, by the way. How do you deal with overcoming jet lag, especially to and from Asia? All right, Chris Double, that's a very good question. So I'm going to tell you this right now. When I'm flying to Asia, okay, this is one of my best tricks. I always plan on landing in Asia between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. I know that's a wide window, right? I just don't want to land any time before like 10 a.m. and I don't want to land any time after like 6 p.m., okay? Reason being is when I get on the plane, you know, usually if you're going to Asia and you're going somewhere at the time, you're usually leaving like around, you know, let's say you leave at 12 noon, all right? And then basically you, you know, it could be a, a 12 hour flight, 13 hour flight to Korea, all right? Or you leave at 11 a.m., 10 a.m. And then basically what would be is it would be 13 hours later. Okay, so if you left at 10 a.m., it would be uh, 11 p.m. your time, right? But the thing is, you got to trick your body because you're landing now at 3 p.m. their time, right? So you, you got you to trick your body for all that shit. So you got to kind of time it. So getting there, when you get there, you got to make sure you sleep at the right time. Don't listen to the airplane. Sometimes the airplane turns lights off when they want to and think that you need this much, whatever. Listen, as long as you get four to five hours of sleep, before you land in, in Korea or in Asia, where the fuck you are, you'll be good. To get six or seven, you'll be even better good, all right? But this is the thing. This is the trick to it. If you're landing at 10 o'clock, then you got to make sure that you're up by like 7, 8 a.m. So you have two hours of chill on the plane and figure it out. Then when you get to, to Asia, you know, you're ready to crisp, whatever, boom. If you got some chance, you know, you got the chance, you got, you got some time, take a 45-minute to an hour nap between 2 to 4 o'clock, and then you're Gucci, Okay, and then basically, you know, go to bed by, you know, 2 a.m. if you can, 1 a.m., take fucking, you know, uh, Benadryl, and then wake up, and if you got to take another nap again, boom, by the second day, you should be good. You, you, you figure this out, and I'm telling you, it works, all right? When you get back to L.A., you know, what I like to do is I like to book, you know, the afternoon flight, boom, you get back to L.A. in the morning time. So by that time, you should definitely make sure seven hours before your land, your motherfucking ass is dead asleep for sure. You wake up in LA, you're crisp, okay? You wake up, get to LA, or get to, you know, whatever city you're in at 10 a.m. Well, in LA, I'm sorry. But you get to LA at 10 a.m., and then, you know what? You stay up. If you got to take a small little nap, cool. And then, you know, at nighttime, at around midnight, if you feel kind of weird here and there, like I said, take an Ambien, take a Benadryl, take a day quill, uh, or night quill PM, go to motherfucking sleep. Make sure you go to bed till at least 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., okay? Wake up, drink some coffee, be up, get, you know, kind of like do some walking around here and there, get your mind right, you know, um, get a little drive, get some air. And then again, if you need to take a little nap, go ahead. Just don't take a nap past three or four o'clock or past four o'clock, you know what I mean? Get up and then right around midnight again, if you got to do it again at the second, third night, you'll be good. And I'm telling you, I've been rocking with that shit for years and it's fucking, you know, it's helped me so much. Nothing worse than motherfucking jet lag. Um... Mata J H Mataj eight, I guess. Hey, new subscriber here. Love your content. My question is, how long did you meet your wife? And how long did you guys date before getting married? I know that she's gonna come on eventually, but I thought I'd ask. PS that coronavirus ain't no joke. Stay safe. Um Oh, how did I meet my wife? I'm sorry. Um, I met my wife through a mutual friend on Facebook. And then uh, my wife said she met me. Oh, she met me before. I, I don't remember meeting her or whatever. And then uh, I guess I met her sometime in 2008 or some shit. I don't remember. But um, we connected in late 2009. Uh, we began officially dating in February 2010. And then we got married February 2012, which is, uh, like I said, my anniversary is on this Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Um. It's pretty crazy, man. Yeah, when I think about it, you know. But yeah, we were engaged. I got engaged within like the first year, and then the wedding and you know, the baby, everything was. I was just ready to go, you know. When time is right, time is right. Adria Adrian with like mad A's and mad N's, uh, Mr. Wash King. Will you ever bring Drake on the show? And what do you think of the 2021 Escalade? Will you be buying one? You know what, dog? Listen, man. I would love to have Drake on the show, right? As he's an old homie of mine. He is a busy dude. Um, a lot of people have a little different opinions with him. You know, I spent a lot of time with this guy. There's been times where we don't speak for a year. 
we come back. And he's like, oh man, make my, my make me feel better if we connect. And you know, it's always like that comeback. He got a lot of love, I'm sure. Like, man, you know, you was there early on. And, you know, dude's an enormous superstar now. I think, you know, it's 50-50. I don't think it's like no way. And I don't think, you know, it's for sure. If, you know, it was we were at a rock, I'd be like, yo, man, jump on the show. Especially maybe when he drops a new album, we could talk about it. Um, I'd fuck around, definitely have Drake on the show. As far as the 2021 Escalade, uh, I really am leaning towards it. I think I am going to grab one, man. Uh, Jake Hutchison, Florida, writes, What up, Ben? I love hip-hop, and I'm slowly unraveling the history, but I've never seen someone who was in it unpack it. Can you start from the bottom and talk about how different styles got to where they are now and who made them and what they are? Thanks. Jesus Christ, man, bro. That's that's not even an episode. That's a motherfucking miniseries. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, there's a, there's going to be thousands of episodes, of, you know, what thousands, but there's going to be at least a thousand episodes of the Behind the Baller and... We got some time to figure it out. Um, Undefeated Chris writes, how do you feel about Greg Olson signing with the Seahawks? To be completely honest with you, I'm not really tripping on Greg Olson. You know, great if he could add to the team and great. But you know what, man? You know, I like Disley. I like Hollister. You know, uh, tell you the truth, to be quite honest, um, I'd rather sign him on the fucking, you know, I mean, we'll see what's up with, with Flash, with Gordon, but I'd rather have Josh Gordon on there, you know, and he's, he's a strong receiver and I'd rather have that. So, but, but Let's see what happens, and, you know, I'll stay positive for the Hawks, man. Um, Assist Boy 1 writes, Ben, love the realness of your pod. Makes my commute somewhat enjoyable. Somewhat? Fuck, dog. <laughs> Two questions. One, did you prefer dropping a dime or getting a bucket? Oh, man. That's a tough one, man. You know what? Sometimes, you know, you you drop this, just a silly dime, and you just do that assist, and the shit made you look so fuck. It made you look brilliant. And then, you know, you could just have a weak bullshit layup. Like, oh, you scored. Um, it really depends. If it, if it came down to it regardless, like the best dime or the best scoring, oh, I'm going to go with the scoring. If it came with the, the so I don't know, you know, it, one for one, I, I got to go with the bucket. Um, who was your all-time NBA starting five? Any era? Damn, man. I wasn't ready for that one. Um, at point guard, it's got to be Magic Johnson. At um at two guard, it's got to be Kobe Bryant. At three, it's got to be either, you know, I'm a Laker, so I'm partial. You know, it might be either Byron Scott, but I might have to go with the score, man. I think it might be James Harden. Uh, at four, you know what? Let me put that back. Fuck, man, I'll put Jordan at three. Cause uh, I I'd rather see Kobe at two. I rather put I put Jordan at three. Um. At four, I hate to say it, it's got to be motherfucking <laughs> shit. At, at four, it, it, fuck, man, it might be LeBron. <laughs> it, might, it might be motherfucking LeBron. And and uh, at five, it's got to be Shaq. I, I love Kareem, it's one of my favorite, but it's just Shaq, it's just so fucking dominant. I don't want to think too much about it. This was, a, this was on the go quick, but that was a good question, man. Uh, Melvin Thomas What's good, Ben? Been rocking with you since the early Twitter days back in 09. Have you ever thought about getting Ivan Jasper Adonsi on the show? Um, you know, me and Ivan been friends for a long time, man, for, for over a decade. Me and Donsi, way over a decade, too. I don't know, man. I, you know, uh, I guess I would talk to Ivan about, you know, design, creativity, aesthetic. Maybe talk about the fact that, you know, no one really talks about how amazing of a barber he is, right? And that's why he is so popular because he's an amazing barber. Uh, Don C, man, Don would be great. I, I don't know what, I'd have to think of some amazing questions to ask Don, but Don would do it. You know, me and Don have a lot in common. We would ask my boy. Um, we're right by the same agency too. I definitely going to fuck around, try to get Don on the show. Um, Marugan underscore Guna writes, would you be able to get Neek on the podcast for an interview? I think it'd be cool to hear that, especially since he disappeared from the earth. PS would fall following both of you since the Nike talk days. You know what, man? Um, Neek is, is in Vegas really off the grid he's just he's just on some other shit he's still driving his cars and stuff and he can't really monday you know like a couple years ago he'd have been down to talk about anything i just think that he had such a tough life coming up and he grew up i mean if i grew up poor you know like i grew up poor but i think he grew up they grew up poor and they, they stayed poor and you know he had a hard grind he came up it's really creative he uh i'm, I'm happy for nick period I, I want him to be happy you know um, 
it's a crapshoot. I think it's easier to get Drake on the show than Neek. We'll see. Um, not just because, but anyways. Um, Gusta, Gusta Vodir, or Vodollar, writes, uh, Yo Ben Shah for the Dominican Republic. Can you do a countdown of legendary nightclubs of all time? Shit, man. I wondered how that would tie in. Um, I'd have to do some research. I'm have to maybe you know I would I would bring in some club owners from different eras, and that'd be a good idea. Then we could figure out what um that'd be a cool episode. I'm game. John V. Tello, Korea represent writes. Been a huge fan since day one. I love the podcast. Everything you're doing representing Koreans. I just want to know if you were ever going to take on any apprenticeships. I'm planning on going to GIA school later this year, early next year. Do you have any advice? Can you please be my mentor? I'm 28 this year and I got a good 20K saved. You just need some good guidance in the right direction. Dog, 28, man. I'm not mad at you, bro. To go to GIA now, that's good. You're being serious about it. Um, understand this is a very heavily saturated game. Um, it's, bro, man, there's space to eat, but it's a heavily saturated game. I'm not taking any, I mean, I do apprenticeships here and there, but Man, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Uh, Big Kochu, which is funny, writes Eliante. Does Eliante use HPHT or CBD diamonds? You know what? You should ask Elliot and see if he respond to you. <laughs> that'd be that'd be a funny thing. You should you should definitely ask him. Uh, Five oh seven J Howard, love the pod. You're like a big bro to me. Can't wait for you to come to New York. Are you meeting up with any listeners? P.S. Copies of surgical ma masks. And N99 masks this week. Coronavirus ain't no joke. Uh, Josiah Howard, brother, I am in New York City. I gave away 15 VVS pens yesterday. Um, I'm rocking around. We'll see, man. We'll see how it goes. But I appreciate you listening to the pod. Thank you so much. Uh, Colombiano1259 writes, love the podcast. Talk about quality, consistency, and knowledge. I'm Andrew from Colombia. My question is, I know you're a car guy music guy and a jewelry guy. And because of that, would you have DJ Envy on your podcast? It seemed y'all relate so much. Would you also be down to have some of the cars on his show that he always does? You know, bro, he's in the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. Envy is my guy. That's my boy. I fuck with Envy. I never had anything bad about Envy to say. He's always been very positive, very cool. He's a, uh, he's a dope dude. I would love to connect with Envy on some car shit if it worked out. As far as being on the show, you know, why not? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm open to it. I'm down. And uh, that was the last question. So, yo, all y'all, God bless. And uh, let's get back to the show. I guess uh, might be some time for some music, right, Miles? Yeah. Okay, so that was dope. This week coming up right here, uh, I got a lot of meetings here. A lot of important meetings in New York City. I'm also gonna uh, sit down with my guy, Ronnie Feig, um, see what Kith has been up to. Uh, I'm gonna sit down with my dog, Kevin from Bape. I got a meeting with Sotheby's. We got some shit cooking up. It's gonna be something crazy, iconic. Um, and uh, I gotta meet with my guy, Kaz. Um, oh yeah, I'm interviewing Ice-T this week. That's gonna be legendary. That motherfucker got stories and we got history to go shit 30, 35 fucking years, man, it's crazy. Um, I'm also interviewing Tracks NYC. Yes, Tracks NYC is gonna get on the Behind the Baller podcast. This should be motherfucking epic. Um, the Brooklyn Nets have invited me to Barclays tonight. All right, sit courtside at the game versus the Orlando Magic. Um, it sucks that KD's out, obviously, right? But it sucks that now Kyrie's out. You know, I wanted to see him play, but listen to Saul G. I'm blessed to be in this position, even if I deserve to be in the position, because I deserve everything I've done in this life. But honestly, man, life is so good. Um, it really is. My life is is really amazing. Um, sometimes when you're up, you got to just take a break and chill instead of trying to fucking be, you know, the man and be like, nah, I'm trying to beat everybody. Fuck this. Listen, you got to take some time off for yourself, especially for your family. You got to let your body and your mind rest, okay? That sleep that you get at nighttime isn't enough, okay? That catching up behavior with everyone you see on Instagram, all the little bullshit, it'll end up killing you. 
Okay, don't play catch up. Don't play that little, I got to do better. I got to do this. I'm trying to get it. That shit scares me. I see I see family members talking about, man, I'm just trying to get it. Dog, you got motherfucking millions, bro. I'm not saying it's not enough, but I mean, bro, learn how to make your money work for you and work smarter. All right? Learn when you got it. Learn to know when you got enough. All right? And as I know I got enough. Oh, yeah. On Friday, I did a small little campaign for a new Adidas sneaker dropping tomorrow. Yeah, a lot of shit happened tomorrow, right? Um, it happens to be l super high key fire, all right. It um, it's uh, Adidas got the two most iconic sneakers, right? They got the shell toe, and they got the classic Stan Smith, right? And Adidas mashed those two iconic designs into one shoe, right? So you get the you got the superstar, and you got the Stan Smith. You put them together. And you get the super stan. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Those shits are fire. You obviously see the post on my um on my Instagram. Uh, they drop exclusively on the network app. Don't sleep. Them shits are hard as fuck. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, while I was doing this uh this campaign, I was allowed to choose where I wanted to shoot this thing at. And you know, there was kind of like there was like you know. I'm not gonna say like restaurants, but I feel bad. But people I knew who owned restaurants and things, they wanted to collab with like other owners and and you know, iconic people who who've done things. And I saw my boy Andy Nguyen on there, his name was on the list. And I, you know, ideally I wanted to be someone Asian, you know. And uh Andy Nguyen is the co-founder of Afters Ice Cream. They're the real dessert phenomenon. Like they're they're the new pink berry. And uh I'm I'm real proud of the of Andy and and, and you know um Scott and the rest of the Afters crew. But we got to chop it up, you know, like light, just real talk, real light. Good to see that money hasn't changed my guy. He's a father now. He's married, still super humble. And, um, you know, we got to chop it up. And I was thinking about that whole OC vibe, you know, um, just the Orange County, different, different. you know, he's, he's Vietnamese and shit and everything. And it got me thinking about this other cat from OC who is a super hard worker and he's also a father. We actually almost mirror each other with kids and age and a uh, Vietnamese cat named uh, Chris the Leverage. Yo, shout out to Chris, man. Um, both him and Andy are crushing it. Regardless of what some idiots think, I do support Asian business owners, especially, you know, these young cats. Um, I just only had some opinions about Crazy Rich Asians, the movie. And you know what? Nah, fuck it. You know what? We're not going to go there. <laughs> we're not going to, we're not going to spew negativity on here against uh, other yellow Brothers, you know, life is good, right? And you know what? That's all the time we got today, okay? Make sure you tune in next time. Remember to subscribe. Remember to tell a friend to tell a friend. And never forget, this is not your practice life. Tell me what you think of that Kobe tribute piece I made. Um, I should be posting it right around now right when i drop this podcast we'll see man all right y'all i love y'all peace <laughs>